in this video we'll be talking about hairy cell leukemia so this is the video outline we'll talk about what is hairy cell leukemia what is the molecular pathology what is the symptom and treatment so hairy cell leukemia is a rare chronic cancer that is characterized by an overproduction of hairy looking white blood cell in a moment we would know what is this white blood cell which is hairy looking okay so in this case Basically, there is an increased production of non-functional, abnormally shaped lymphocytes. Specific specifically, the B cells are affected in this particular case. And in a peripheral blood smear or from a bone marrow smear, anybody can appreciate the weird hairy appearance of these B cells. That's a characteristic of this particular leukemia. So how common is hairy cell leukemia? It turns out 600 to 800 new cases are registered every year in United States. So it's basically 1 to 2% of all leukemias. It's not that common. It's rare. Anyway, let's talk about what is the cause of hairy cell leukemia. It turns out there is a mutation in BRAF gene that is associated with the cancer progression. So question is what is BRAF and how it is associated with the molecular pathology? So let's talk about what is BRAF. So basically BRAF is an oncogene that encodes for this particular kinase. So BRAF is a path uh, is inside the pathway of MAP kinase and basically it initiates a kinase cascade. Now imagine a scenario when there is no growth factor stimulation. So obviously this MAP kinase pathway should be off. But it's not off. In this case, one can understand that even if the, uh, the ligands are not present, the BRAF is constitutively active due to the mutation. The downstream signaling pathways are active and uncontrolled proliferation is happening. It is leading to cancer. So in normal scenario, the mitogen activates RAS. RAS further activate RAF, then make, then ARC, and ultimately pathways converge to growth, survival, and proliferation. So after a while, when the uh, mitogen is not present anymore, there is GTPase activator protein that stops the RAS and also RAF is inhibited. So the entire pathway is now shut down. So it's kind of like an on and off switch and this regulated pathway is important for regulated growth. When this pathway goes wrong due to the constitutive activity of RAF, that leads to cancer. Okay, so now let's talk about our overall idea about blood, uh, blood cell development. So it starts from hematopoietic stem cell. It gives rise to myeloid and lymphoid progenitor. Myeloid progenitor gives rise to RBC, platelets, monocytes, granulocytes, etc. Lymphoid progenitor gives rise to T cells and the B cells. So here the B cells basically are getting affected. So generally due to the mutation of the BRAF gene, uh, the B cells are taking a weird appearance with hair-like projections, which are now known as hairy cells in this particular context. So the general symptoms include extreme tiredness, general weakness, frequent infections, and une under unexplained weight loss. So basically it develops in a later point of life. So overall there is a low level of blood cell in the body which is known as pancytopenia. So when there is less blood cell, people would get more fatigue. There is anemia, that means reduction in RBCs. So less oxygen, uh, extreme level of dizziness can be explained by this. There is also neutropenia and monocytopenia. Both of these blood cells are highly associated with immune response. So obviously the immune response get weakened and frequent infection happens. Also, the platelet number goes down, that means they have more chances of getting bruise and clotting defect can also be found. So many of these immature uh, hairy-like blood cells basically get accumulated in the spleen and it lead to the enlargement of the spleen known as splenomegaly. Now, When the spleen is enlarged, it, it basically push uh, against the ribs and there is a pain below the rib region. Also, there could be accumulation of these hairy cells in lymph nodes, which lead to swollen lymph node in the neck, groin region, etc. So the diagnosis is dependent on peripheral blood smear or the complete blood count because the complete blood count would be like 
totally changed in this case. Also, more definitive test can be done from bone marrow biopsy. Uh, it's a painful process, but still it's more definitive. Immunotyping is another solution where uh, these hairy cells has specific and characteristic signature receptors and markers on their surface that can be detected using flow cytometry. And uh, basically, this is more expensive, but this is more confirmatory uh, in case of hairy cell leukemia. So when it comes to treatment, chemotherapy uh, is often the first line of treatment. Currently, uh, pentostatin and uh, uh, cladribine are the two chemotherapy drugs commonly prescribed for hairy cell leukemia. So one conceptual thing is like BRAF signaling pathway, BRAF signaling pathway or overall growth signaling pathway is affected in this cancer. So uh, BRAF inhibitors would be an important uh, regulators or a, a therapeutic agent in this case. And uh, there is a inhibitor known as Vemurafenib, Vemurafenib. This particular drug is actually an inhibitor of BRAF, ki BRAF kinase, so it prevents overproliferation and uh, kind of like slows down the cancer progression. So I hope this video was useful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you in the next video.